Barbara Black, the artist, and I think I'll start with some of the earliest works that were done in the uh, exhibit. Uh, there's quite a variation in that some of the works are in black and white and some are in color, but they all contain references to my um, usual content in that I tend to work with abstract kinds of spaces and uh, geometric forms juxtaposed uh, as in this case uh, with more realistic kinds of forms, the, the recognizable ram's head and then the more abstraction, the reference to the golden section and the Fibonacci spiral. Mm -hmm. Those are themes that occur, reoccur in my work fairly often. Uh, this was a linoleum block print uh, which has been uh, incorporated into a collage. Uh, this is on the painted surface and then elements of the print have been collaged together. Mm -hmm. And I was very intrigued in this particular one, which is called Aries, by um, an image I saw and drew from which was of a sculpture with the spiral of the ram's horn, and then I added the spiral of a nautilus shell to refer to the Fibonacci spiral that can be placed in the um, golden section. This is more of a figurative reference to uh, perhaps the Jungian idea of the shadow figure, it's a, or if any figure at night. And once again, there's little collaged reference to the uh, Nautilus shell and the Fibonacci spiral right there. Um, and just kind of a small, modest work with a little bit of color, but mm -hmm. remaining in the black and white area. That's called Dark Gesture. This one is called Shadow Gesture. And both the previous piece and this one have some elements of monoprint in them and then uh, additions of collage. There is a figure hidden on the right side. You try to hide them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the shadow and we often try oh. to hide our shadow <laughs> side, don't we? I use triangles a lot as symbols. As I said, I use abstract spaces and then uh, realistic uh, imagery to kind of go together uh, in a symbolic way to refer to our observed world, but also the world of memory and dream, imagination, going back and forth perhaps between the physical world we see and the, the unseen world. I'm, part of my artistic journey is trying to explore those, those domains, and I don't always think out the imagery in a precise narrative way. I often begin with um, more abstract formal concepts, putting continually uh, images that I continue to work with and whatever new images attract me together to see if an unexpected meaning in relation to those ideas will occur. And maybe I'm, I would say I'm impelled by the thoughts that we have about the environment and the threat to species and the world. And that, that seeps into the work. And in this particular, this is mostly oil. It's entirely watercolor. And here the thought was of the human uh, species not necessarily paying attention to the animal species. Um, I named it Plato's Cave because there's kind of these forms are looking away and there's kind of a, an ideal image up above. This is a little different one, just the opposite kind of relationship, talking about the close relationship we have with animals in the world. Once again, another watercolor form. This whole imagery is based on a, an, it's called after a Greek sculpture, and there was a relief sculpture that I inspired it, and I made some changes and additions for that one. This is winged gesture, and it's a collage uh, combined with painting on paper, and uh, various elements. Um, this is like from an etching, and this is a reproduction, and this is a reproduction of one of a 
portion from a painting is this, this little landscape. I'm very interested in wings as symbolizing either the soul or angels uh, or birds. We're not, you know, they have all those references. Spirit. As I said, I, I put these images together and then try to um, figure out what the narrative is of that kind of uh, inspiration that I'm not quite consciously aware of. So I rely a lot on intuition and, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't call it accident, I think. I call it the muse. Once again, collage elements, the repetition of the triangle, which signifies either, either mountains or pyramids or abstract geometry. I actually started out with the figure and two lines here in the figure, mm -hmm. and then it just kind of grew around it and yeah. down and up. That is a photocopy that's been altered of a drawing of a, by Jim Dine of a sculpture in a German museum. So it, it gets a lot of art history built up on top of it. And I've painted and drawn on top of the photocopy. This is the same dog we saw in the other one, only I had to invent the rest of it. And, um, it's called Dream Gesture, and I don't know if the dog is... The dog is looking up, she's reaching down. Um, and that one's called Interrupted Flight. So, uh, and it's ambiguous to me whether it's the flight of the bird or the flight of the cherub that was interrupted. Hmm. Or is that an anima figure? Did it just appear? We don't know. Who knows? We don't know. No. <laughs> Some of the narrative is left to the viewer. Uh -huh. This one's called Spirit Gesture, and um, my original thought was that it was about the disappearance of the species, and I saw them going from reality to less real, but someone else looked at it and said it was coming into existence, yeah. and so I think that's go up to way. each person. It can and go either way. No? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And these two works, once again, are almost black and white, mm -hmm. but with some color, um, and they're the newest ones. This image was based on a figure from a Van Eyck virgin, uh, but as I painted it, it started to look, uh, people commented that it looks like my daughter, so <laughs> that was interesting to me. And uh, I had a different plan for what would happen here, but this collage piece exactly fit, this, and so that seemed to tell me that it was supposed to be there. Doors and windows as transitions between various domains of the world, uh, the physical world, the unseen world. These are images that are reproductions from other paintings, I've, uh, paintings that I've done, large paintings on canvas, and uh, once again, we have kind of a window, and I think of this as almost landscape. Once again, the wings appear, the, the white wing and the black wing, sort of the contrast of the total opposites. Lots of animals in this show, man, many more than in any previous show that I've done. Not quite sure what, what it means, although I do think a lot about species, and we're all kind of horrified when we see, you know, polar bears swimming and not able to reach land. And, and I think we think about the various uh, species and what's happening and hope that we can't, uh, that we can stop some of that in time. He's the guardian of the underworld and he is also meant to be the guardian of uh, the dead and their funerary spots. So um, I do, the dog, I seem to be involved in dog imagery, which some people have commented is strange since I own cats and not dogs. <laughs> and I guess I really am interested in things around the edge where we don't have all the answers, exploring what, what might be answers and seeing if visual imagery gives us insights into those thoughts that we have about, uh, you know, we're, was it uh, Gauguin who said, mm -hmm. you know, where, where have we been and where are we, why are we here and where are we going? Those kinds of questions I think uh, we think about, a l I think about a lot, and most of us do. We're going somewhere, but we don't know. Yes. <laughs> I like mysteries. <laughs> <laughs>